Something we know is also critical in creating an environment where people truly thrive is leadership. Leaders, whether formal or informal, have the power to make a genuine difference to the mental and emotional wealth of people. As luck or design would have it, leadership and the neuroscience of leadership at that is the final topic in today's event. Who is ever going to admit they're not a good leader? Particularly when for the last 20 to 30 years, academics, industry, monks, yogis, world leaders, and even my mum, have all had their say on what makes a great leader. And yet, if the world of work has changed, shouldn't that give us pause to think about whether our leadership should too? To explore this, we've been working with our next guest, Peter Bureau, chairman of NeuroPower Group, and his team to understand how leaders can have the most value and impact, both for their organisations and their teams, by understanding some of the neuroscience and, in particular, meeting the emotional needs of employees. Peter, always lovely to see you again, and from Brisbane today. Great to see you. Can you share a little more on the six emotional needs you identified in employees? Well, I can, and they're six social cognitive needs. Um, it's a fascinating area because we can track in the brain through neurochemicals and through the current in the brain whether or not your brain is in that green zone, high performance zone, or whether it's really struggling. And there are six key areas that we need to get right if we're going to be not only well, but also performing at our very best. So the first of these is this sense of belonging. This isn't about being wanted. This is about being needed. We need to be needed. Uh, what's interesting about these social cognitive needs is that you can't satisfy them yourself. You have to satisfy them with the, with the wider group. So when we start moving from uh, work to a distributed work place, uh, some of these needs, like the need to be needed, become a, quite confused. We're not quite sure whether we're needed. Um, if you're watching, a zo you're on Zoom and you're there with another 15 other people, are you needed in that context or are you just uh, another participant? This need to be needed has a huge impact on uh, serotonin in the brain. And serotonin is like a magic carpet neurochemical that all the other neurochemicals flow on. If we've got too much, we tend to get anxious. If we've got too little, we tend to get depressed. So as a leader, one of the things we need to do is to work hard at encouraging the rest of the team to start interacting and giving positive feedback about the role everybody's playing and how essential that role is to the output. And if you've got people on the, on the calls and interacting that are there and they're not needed, that's a conversation you need to have as well. So the first one is the need to belong. The second one is the need to express, and this is to express how you're feeling. The third is the need to achieve. The fourth is the need to connect and genuinely connect. And so this is a real challenge. Uh, when you've got flexibility, people aren't coming together face-to-face um, -face all the time. The next one is the need to learn, and the final one is the need to feel a sense of optimism and hope for the future. So these six needs are critical to well-being and performance, to be satisfied. Yeah. I finally feel so understood. I need to be needed. <laughs> Besides <laughs> traumatic <laughs> memories of handling rats in my neuroscience classes back at uni, I'm also reminded of how critical all of these neurotransmitters are to thinking and performance. Can you share a few examples of how these neurotransmitters actually impact performance and how they can be generated by the environments our leaders create? Yeah, so the, the first one we've already covered, which is serotonin. And every time you get a sense that somebody needs you, whether it's a cup of coffee or you're helping somebody with their computer or you're talking about, you get a shot of, of serotonin and it starts to level up. The second, uh, which is very interesting, is dopamine. And dopamine comes when you express. It's addictive. We have a need to express how we're feeling. Uh, so often when we're, when we're working remotely or in a flexible environment, it's quite functional and task oriented. So we tend to run low on dopamine. It's a, it's a feel good drug in the brain. That's why when you meet somebody uh, who you haven't seen for a while in person, you light up. When you have a drink with them, you light up. When you're, when you're telling jokes or you're interacting, you light up. Dopamine is important for creativity and for lateral thinking. Uh, and the third one that I'll mention is oxytocin. Oxytocin is the love drug. Uh, and what we find is that high-performance teams have higher levels of oxytocin in their blood. It's very hard 
than get oxytocin virtually. So this has huge implications then. If you're a leader, historically, we used to put a lot of time into our strategic offsites. Uh, we detail each part of the strategy. So good to hear about uh, a near scientist talking to us about love drugs and magic carpets. So for all the leaders out there, and I essentially mean all of us, we're going to know we have to do something quite differently in a hybrid world. This means that we're going to have to change the old ways we used to lead uh, and shift them into new ways to really understand the emotional needs of our people. Any thoughts on that, Ben? Well, I mean, Michelle, you're the psychologist in all of this, but um, if I think about my own reflection of being a leader in the current environment and, and thinking about how I've gone about leading teams, it really is quite a challenge uh, when you can't physically see people. But I think going to, to what Margot and Sharon were talking about and how I connect with that as a leader, I think that it's how do we take all the good parts of what we saw during COVID in terms of really checking in on your people, uh, in terms of being able to really get to, to know your people on a human level. And I want to make sure that just because we see the, the impact of the pandemic start to subside in Australia, that we don't just go uh, back to what things were pre-COVID, but that we actually maintain that level of empathy and connection and genuinely getting to know our people with authenticity. And it can't be forced, can it, Ben? Because um, we've spoken to a few clients and they've been sort of saying, well, we want people to come back in and they're asking their, their employees to come back in. And I think that makes it really hard because it makes it almost as if the leaders are saying, you must connect now. But we've got to find more organic ways, don't we? We absolutely do. Michelle, I think we've got Peter back online. So I, we might throw back to Peter in Brisbane. This is the future of work technology. We've all been tested. I know I've had the you're on mute uh, scenario one too many times. The fact that uh, my boss got me a mug. But Michelle, next question for Peter. Thanks so much, Ben. Back to you, Peter. I just want to ask you one final question, which is what does this mean that leaders essentially should be doing differently in a hybrid world, given the old ways we used to lead may not work anymore? Well, the big shift is that these social cognitive needs were met and organisations and leaders, we've been trained for many years, how do we meet these needs? So much so that it's all become implicit. Rituals which help us get a sense of stability, um, this sense of the team letting us know how we're going, opportunities to express how we're feeling, all of this is implicit. Now, what we need to do as leaders over this next period is take all this implicit activity and make it explicit. How do you create a culture as a leader that enables everybody to be giving feedback on the value people are adding? And for two reasons. One, so that the person feels valued, but also so that people aren't spinning their wheels and wasting time. How can we create an environment? How can we encourage people to spend time face to face, make the trip to spend time face to face to express how they're feeling and to discover each other's aspirational selves? Uh, so this is a, uh, it's it, rather than a hub and spoke, we now need to have a lot of this information shared and a culture created so that the team looks after itself a lot more. And then finally, from a strategic perspective, strategy is about trade-offs. How can everybody in the team understand, everybody in the network that's de delivering, how can they all understand the trade-offs that they need to make uh, in their part of uh, the delivery chain so that it's strategically aligned? <laughs> You can't now go back to the leader all the time for guidance. We need everybody in the team to understand the strategy. Thanks, Peter. I think it's important to take the time to understand the needs and motivations of teams, as opposed to getting in and solving at a superficial level without asking why. Well, that's all from us, and it concludes our exploration of some of the key themes and considerations for hybrid working. Over to you, Ben. <laughs> 